So John sent uh, a TikTok to the oh. band group text. I sent it to Courtney too. And I made the unfortunate error in judgment in opening it when my girlfriend was in the room. <laughs> at which point she turned around and looked at me aghast and said, what the hell is that? And I said, John sent this as a TikTok to the band. She's like, oh, okay. That does sound like something John would send. Nice. <laughs> um, Michael, if you want, I can send you the audio. Uh, emotional, eh, Barhood? All right, bet. I'm going to tell you all a little story then. Hey. Hey, I miss my man, can he please come back? I love his nuts, yeah, I love his sack. Love when that nigga blow out my back. And my favorite part about him is that he is big buff and black. Yeah, his dick is a spine cracker. Get to the sack like a linebacker. Love when he give me that bone. He up in my guts and he making me moan. Hey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that was some good <laughs> lyrics right there. Bars. I uh I cry laughed aggressively as I was sending that to everybody. <laughs> And I almost I'm not I, shocked. I almost sent that to our chat uh <laughs> so that we could all be on the same page, but I was like, there's no way that Shane wants to talk about this dumb fucking TikTok. I thought you were gonna <laughs> pivot the right way and say, I almost sent it to my mom. That's how excited I was by this. Good oh Lord. geez. Well actually I mean, she produced it, co produced it. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, she knows all about that <laughs> spine crack a lacking. She uh she throws down those beats really hard. Yeah, I am her official chiropractor. Make sure she's good and aligned. <laughs> it's yeah, mostly my bet. weight sinking on top of her. It's just, you know, I'm like a weighted blanket with a tiny nub of a dick, and it's really delightful. <laughs> Sorry, just... Mom. Sorry, God. Are you there? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you can't tell if I am. I guarantee it. I won't touch bottom, but I will stretch out the sides. It is known. And speaking of stretching out the sides, hi, all come slingers, and welcome to what is roughly an anniversary edition of sorts of the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. And we are celebrating Courtney this evening by allowing her to be a flamethrower in our general <laughs> direction, which is very delightful. For those of you who are uninitiated, uh, Courtney has only been on this show as a co-host for a little over a year now. And uh, so it's uh, wonderful that she started out as a listener initially and was the uh, often uh, alluded to Christian Stitcher. <laughs> For the bulk of the probably, you know, second seasons when we started really roping her in, I think. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this evening, she is going to regale us with some of our own foibles, facts, and, uh, you know, misadventures, as it were. Oh, yeah. We're going to get oh. into all kinds of good stuff. And, you know, based on who listens to this podcast, I'm guessing John has never heard any of this before. So it should be really fun for him. It's going to be a lot of review for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like watching The Departed for the second time. You're like, holy fuck. The whole time, Matt Damon? Exactly. <sighs> well, I guess I should probably give the proper intro. Uh, for those who are completely unfamiliar with the podcast proper, if you just saw a sticker on a bus stop and made the error in judgment and scanning it, You're then... Welcome. Uh, you've been brought here by Michael and my Sutterfuge, apparently. But and stop uh, shitting in his library, you <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't really have to clean it up, so you're you're fine. I'll just call facilities. They so shit all you want. Never You'll mind. I more. take it back. Shit in there. You won't. <laughs> yeah. I dare you. I dare you. John will watch. He'll actually pay you if he can. If you let me take it to go, <laughs> to go box, <laughs> <laughs> take it to Goodwill. I like that you're standing there with like a Chinese takeaway little Good rice God. box under the guy. Like, come on, come on, Carvel me. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, it's oh. diarrhea. Oh. Oh, this isn't soft serve. Blowback, blowback. A, a little more subtext, Shane. I'd be like, oh, there's no fiber in this diet. Oh, there's no fiber to be found. Yeah. Man, stop eating chalk, you fuck. <laughs> What is this? Chocolate sauce? <laughs> oh, uh, are you from Hershey? <laughs> oh my God. Cliff? Okay, so. I can tell you not from Hoboken. 
I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> I wish I was in Noboken right now. I'd never be happy to die. But uh, for the uninitiated amongst you, we typically delve into random esoteric topics on this podcast. And in the course of explaining them to one another, we lie about them. That is the shtick. It has held us now for three inglorious seasons. And uh, we are going to suffer for it this evening. I have an inclination. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I was really nervous because I just, I had to get this right to really encapsulate the first 77 episodes that didn't include me. It just needed to be special. <sighs> Let's Question. not talk about the sausage party, please. Wait, are you, 77. Are you, is are that you bullshit? Gonna, <laughs> are you going to wreck? So, th- so this is, this is a, this is our official like clips show. Yes. Yeah. I do have about, I think, seven clips pulled up ready to go. I did try to go through the clip folder, which is a hot mess of a disaster. It's totally unorganized. And yeah, it's yeah. rough, man. It's really I think at some point we really should go through and clean out and do a clip show of you guys trying to figure out what episodes the clips are from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, be great. That's, that sounds like an after dark to me. That I'm does also, like furthermore, multiple. I don't think that even we know which ones they came <laughs> from. Because uh, basically, Michael throws them in there just based on the dates. It has nothing to do with where it actually emanated from. Also, Michael, I, I don't do this enough, but I just want to extend a very sincere thank you. Because for a very good long while now, I've been yelling at you randomly <laughs> mid-episode, clip that. And you know what you've done? You've actually clipped it. Uh-huh. So thank you for being a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're out of context. So I don't, I don't know how uh, we're going to. John's that. version of the Golden Girls is an entirely different context and can only be featured on Pornhub. So let's never use that theme song again. Okay, brother? Sounds good. All right. <laughs> Sophia. Oh, we're off to a good start. All right. So, uh, how many lies do you have for us? It, are are there lies? <laughs> is this is this conventional storytelling here, or are we just going to mutilate us? So, in the tradition of the original format of the show, I have three lies for you. Okay. So one of those. Is, so the number of lies is a lie. <laughs> no. If that actually if no. that actually was true, I would disconnect this call right now. <laughs> No, you know what's funny is I did tell John I was going to do something like that. And he was like, that's so boring. And I was like, it's right up their alley. They would have they would ate it up. So I don't know what you're talking about. Between the both of you, you know us so well. <laughs> 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 While I was putting together, I sat down and I had this thought of like, this is a big chunk of my life that I'm just never going to get back. Like I, I listened to whatever hundred plus hours of this podcast already and then i spent probably another hundred hours working on this to really fine tune it down to my favorite bits of the early days as i will preface we're gonna stay in the early days because there's a lot of content and i could not Mm -hmm. fit it all in one episode (laughs) that makes me happy and sad at the same time well, I mean, let's talk about the suffering that you have endured is is also manifold because Michael has edited all of those shows. <laughs> and uh, I have screened all of those shows. I and have, John I almost took to, part in most of them. I was so. say, at least a quarter. At least a quarter. I could I could I could guarantee a quarter. Um but I did share this on our, our chat today. Uh, that Kristen shared her like Spotify tops thing and where her top podcast and I I apologize profusely to her that that ended up being the case but uh, she listened to forty six of our episodes for a total of three thousand four hundred and eighty three minutes. Holy yep. shit! You uh, oh. yeah, I I was actually having this conversation again with a couple of folks about the Dungeons and Dragons After Dark that we had last week, oh, fantastic. which you will have had a chance to see today as we record this uh last wednesday as you listen and yeah i i've had folks like that's almost two hours like "Mm -hmm." we knew what we were getting into but uh, (laughs) i don't think that we knew how to pull the reins back but i enjoyed every solitary second of it it flew by for me oh i thought uh, when we wrapped and you're like oh yeah because we've been recording for about an hour i was like yeah that feels right and even when i was looking at the time i was like that seems like it's pretty late and then when you sent it i was like damn near two hours fuck yep um so oh. we uh, we do tend to get lost in this. It is a labor of love, <laughs> truly. Uh, on that top, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. To cut you off. 
Yeah, he is. The, the funny bit and the reason that she sent it is that on Spotify's wrapped, like after, because it did the same thing for me with uh, Last Pod on the Left. It shares a secondary screen with your top podcast through the year with the script. And yes, it's totally normal to consider your favorite podcast host a member of your family. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, They've gone too so far. Thank you, thank you, sister, for actually uh, being a member of my family. <laughs> and listening and to uh, silly somewhere uh, Dr. Michael is, is very elated to hear that because that is uh, his primary commentary on the show is it feels like we're, we're all friends here. Ooh. Little does he know. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and also thank you for uh, letting me get away with the, the one number lie without giving me too much guff. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, the between one? the uh, the three of you, uh, he's the one I like the most. So That checks out. Fantastic. Anyway, sorry that we're uh, talking over you. No, that's cool. great. I actually, I wanted to start you guys off with a little bit of trivia about your own podcast. Do you guys know Fun. what the longest episode was? Uh, that's 39% Mike, Michael? No. Episode 39? Uh, that would be 43% uh, Michael's the title, oh my and that's God. also still not correct. <laughs> um, fuck, it has to be, it has to be one of the ones from, like, peak COVID time. It has to be one where we had a My Immortal on the back of it, because that's where we really went off the, the rails and got <laughs> slap happy. It's um, not heavy water, is it? No. I'm, oh, I'm gonna God. assume, man, yeah, I'm gonna be wrong, because I'm gonna say the anniversary episode felt like the longest to me. <laughs> It also feels long listening to it when I've when I've gone back. Hashtag Justice for Michael episode fifty two. Oh my god, I forgot you mentioned that. Wait, what? You go listen to that episode again, John, and tell me how that's the one year episode for Michael, the creator of this podcast. So even funnier, uh, allow me to do just uh, continually divulge from or diverge from the topic. Uh, I just listened to episode fifty with Melissa because uh we were having giddy fun about the Stardust Ranch nonsense the other day. And uh yeah, we actually are teasing that we're like, hey, fifty is kind of a it's an anniversary for a lot of folks, but fifty two is technically, you know, the full year of, of weeks. And John's like, oh, I have a really great idea. We could have like our first official guest on the show. And as I'm listening to it, I was I back to the future myself. I was like, if I can get in a car <laughs> Drive back to recording this session and be like, don't do it, man, without a very lengthy chat beforehand so that we can, you know, tell Dewan, we want to try to make it sound like we're professional here, brother. Well, Courtney, if you keep referencing uh, episode numbers, I just started it right now. I'll put them into a Spotify playlist called Disinformed Clip List. Um <laughs> I do have a lot time, of so. episode numbers listed in here, so yeah, even if even if you just want to send them after yeah. the episode, I'll put together a playlist and send them, put them on our link, link tree. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm sure we're all wrong. Oh, you're 100 percent wrong. The longest episode yeah. is episode 41, interrupting cow at 135 minutes. Huh, makes sense. How about the shortest? It one? was a. It's a loose fit, so naturally that will oh. be one where we go crazy. Uh, yeah. I would say elephants on acid. For That's the correct. One. Ooh. That one was only 35 minutes. I, I made a point of keeping that as short as humanly possible because I knew we were going to have a long recording night that evening. And so I, I tried to game the system a little to keep it funny. <laughs> um, do we know? So have any of you looked at the spreadsheet this week? No. I updated not it today. this week. <laughs> okay, then <laughs> Shane, you might not get to answer this. Um, All right. Who's done more episodes, John or Freeform? Freeform. <laughs> free form yeah that one's easy you're you're four episodes behind the free form um my idea in my head always was doing the free form in lieu of having to research <laughs> oh yeah we all we all knew that well you know, I know. How we it know wasn't that a hidden thing is because john went from episode 12 to 48 without presenting that's november 4th of 2019 <laughs> to july 13th of 2020 were you okay where were you <laughs> not uh, here i don't know <laughs> I mean, some would argue he was never here, intellectually <laughs> speaking. There's not a lot going uh, between the ears, you know what I mean? I I can <laughs> smell really far. Oh. Um, I can speak from experience. The best part of John rolled down the inside of his mom's thighs. Oh, no. My big fat cock was on her thighs. Uh. Yep. <laughs> 
Ugh. Yuck. Okay, anyways. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot between your legs, not a lot between your uh, ears, and that's the unfortunate aspect of you, John. It's uh, the tragedy of my character. <laughs> Indeed. The Jonah Falcon of this podcast. Uh, Winging a prayer. The John Watkins story. Yep, yep. All right, so I'm going to really get into it now and really lay it on you about how I became introduced to this nightmare thing we call a podcast. Oh, good. (laughs) Uh, So I'd like to think of myself as an early adopter. I think I started around episode 15, which was the Stargate project. Oh, damn. That's the one. Yep. And um, I actually remember in vivid detail John telling me about the podcast um, because he did it in such a like meek and mild John way that was just like, hey, you're picking up beers to go at my place of employment. Do you listen to podcasts? Yeah, John, I listen to podcasts. Well, you know, I do one sometimes with the Howie's Mike's Pizza Guy and Shane from the band if you want to listen. Okay, send it to me. I'll think about it. And then he sent me a link to Spotify and I was like, I don't know Spotify. If it's not (laughs) a Stitcher, I'm not listening. You're you're not wrong. You you did literally tell me that. And I literally did relay that back to the boys. (laughs) We have a potential listener. That's not listening because it's not available on her preferred platform. Uh, and, and then it was immediately on your preferred platform because I, I took the initiative <laughs> and made sure that that happened. Yeah. And I just like to think of myself in that moment as the most supportive friend of like, give it to me the way I want it or I don't want it at all. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, to John's credit, as he said on many occasions, he does not refer to this podcast unless he's very certain <laughs> that you're going to want to hear it. He's a good Satanist that way. I was going to say, like, I I don't like to beat people over the head with it, but if I feel like, and also, like, with the hashtag cancel me daddy thing in full effect, like, if uh-huh. you're going to get to know the real me, then I want to make sure that, like, I feel like <laughs> we're going to at least kind of like, somewhat be kindred, Uh huh. you know? So it's, it's not unreasonable for us to attempt to curate our audience before well, we started <laughs> plastering our well, signage. Well, think about everywhere. it. We're not, we're not always fortunate to have uh, fans like Michael or, or Steven, you know, who will relay that out to other people in their circles Mm -hmm. you know so you have to kind of curate it from within to start exactly exactly and it occurred to me much later that it the only reason john had even told me about the podcast is he had recently presented an episode that he was really proud of and in fact i believe you're wearing the shirt from that particular episode right now oh (laughs) birds are real yeah 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 oh but what most of the times that I presented, yeah, I was episode, like, that came much later. That yeah, was, was episode was fifty-one. Late. There, well um, done, Michael. That's the he first lie. He presented Hollow Moon, <laughs> I believe. Uh, yeah, that was, was a fucking 12. stinker. Although that one still gets a couple of views on YouTube. Hey, yeah, conspiracy theorists. Uh, that one got a lot of views on YouTube. Yeah, I think that's enough. actually your probably most downloaded episode and furthermore can we give credit to the fact that i think you literally just lifted last pod's script for that (laughs) i mean i didn't (laughs) i listened to the episode and read a wikipedia article maybe like a news article from like some like shitty tabloid okay about it so okay so three tabs that's more credit than i was planning to give you so well well done remembering what episode that was i was not an early adopter john did not tell me about the podcast till episode 51 Oh, okay. oh. Yeah, that, that, that also that. So that I had out. a lot to go well. through to get caught up, and I think I did it in about two months. Bless you. And the best you're part, the one. <laughs> the best part about this time was every time I would listen to an episode, I would send John commentary on it, even though I was like years back, and I still have some of those text messages. So I will oh, regale you with them. No, I'm, I didn't know this at all. <laughs> It's like you didn't tell us that someone was giving commentary. I didn't want to impact the show. <laughs> I did it for the. <laughs> I only I do that do when it benefits me. Do the show at all? I didn't want to keep it. Yeah, I didn't want to place my thumb on the scale. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to do that. Except for when people tell me that they don't like personal conversation and they just want us to get to the episode, then I'll speak. Right. Up. Right. <laughs> Um, so we'll start with August 22nd. Um, I sent him episode four, of a drinking year? game. Uh, this would have been 2019. 2020. This was before no. all episodes were published. Was- <laughs> <laughs> I left the year out in case you missed the lie in the last paragraph, but it would have been oh, 2020. 
Um, I said episode four, a drinking game of how many times Michael says, okay, I'm so wasted right now. <laughs> and also, it's not okay, it's okay. 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 Yes. But that's Michael, true. Michael, you've come so far. I like, have. Literally I, across I the room. That. I'm so happy. <laughs> September 10th, episode 19. I gave a timestamp, 2557. I should have looked this up. I forgot to. Shane mentions a corona discharge, and that was in December. My new conspiracy theory is that Shane spoke coronavirus into existence. And in I this very second, I now have the right to sue him for attempted murder on my life. I mean, I'd have to get in line with the number of people trying to kill you these days. So <laughs> that's go fair. ahead. You won't get much from me. I can't even afford to pay attention. Huh? That was a good joke. <laughs> also, I know you're drinking a Shane Weiser right now, but there is a beer uh, from a brewery called Anderson Valley. It's a, it's, I think it's Briny Melon Goes, and the can looks exactly like the can that you're pulling up in a, a koozie. And I was like, is Shane drinking a fucking sour right now? Is he? If, if you don't know that that is a key lime, my friend, then uh, you're you're not the uh, philosopher I, I thought you to be. I hope you never thought that. <laughs> I'm actually sorry that you even thought that for a moment. And may God have mercy on your soul. This is what happens there when John no starts to have thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Don't put brains in the scarecrow. Uh... But uh, in the same conversation I accused Shane of starting the coronavirus, I also let John know that you guys should start a disinformed book club because the Doctor Sleep episode was very entertaining. I went on with uh, delightful tidbits like sending him a picture of sexy banana bread costume to show to Shane. Don't um, remember if I did that. You never saw that? Nope. <laughs> I'll wow. Send, I'll send it in the chat and I'll put it on Instagram. And then most devastatingly was that many of our messages were actually in regards to my conspiracy about Michael, but those were all through Snapchat. So I don't have those messages anymore, but don't worry. We're going to get the whole theory tonight and you guys are finally going to understand what's been going on this whole time. I'm intrigued. Okay. Scared. This feels like a big payoff that I wasn't ready for. <laughs> oh, I, I read this conspiracy out loud today to Jonah and he goes, is that all true? I was like, yeah, oh, it no. is, buddy. It goes all the way to the top. <laughs> oh, no. It goes all the um, way to the top. But over the last few weeks, I've been going back over old episodes, and there's just, like, a lot of gems to be had. Obviously, we have the clip folder. Um, but if just going back and really sitting with some of the things that have come out of y'all's mouths is just, it's wildly entertaining. And the, the first thing that really stood out to me, and this will be my first clip, is... Um, Michael's introduction on the podcast. So I understand based on the way you guys recorded, you had recorded the episode and then had to go back and record the intro. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the first oh, four or five. Also, did you already share sound, Courtney? So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. You can cut this from the episode too, Michael. You can you can do that, Michael. Hi. I Sorry to permission. editorialize. Thank you for giving me permission. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, also, you can donate me $500 to the uh, Shane Hunt I, Scholarship Program. Um, you can do I know that. I could, about I'm I really, would. I'm really stoked that you actually have clips pulled. This is great. Um, so this was Michael's first foray into the episode, episode one. I mean, if you want to be an extraterrestrial, John, we can. Michael, are you here? I am. I am. I... You're presenting I, this episode, yeah, so you've got a lot to say. Well, yeah, yes, I do. A director's cut. Like, what, what was going through your head when you when you recorded this? Um, I guess sheer terror. <laughs> this is so fucking dumb. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe like uh, sheer terror. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> So, um, in case we, we did talk about it when we were doing those re-records, but what happened is that John, when we first started, his job was to select music for us to have for the <laughs> intros, and he would hold his phone up <laughs> as we were recording, which is why the only one that remained was the one for episode two for Levan Satanism, because it became a bit... Because he was holding it, and we all just erupted into laughter also, and couldn't compose ourselves. And uh, so, hence, Uncle Touchy. Also on that one, it was uh, because I had pulled up royalty-free horror yes, music. Yes, you did. So uh -huh. even though I was holding it up and it sounds exactly how it is, 
it still was royalty free and we could keep it. <laughs> yeah and plus we also had said and we loved the bit so much we would just roll the dice it's like we're gonna get sued for anything let's go for this one as opposed to the other ones that were just not necessarily appropriate but i feel like we probably lost a few decent jokes from intros because <laughs> of the fact that we had to cut a lot of that out yeah we still have the original original intros too we do yes so if anybody wants them <laughs> money for, for michael's fabled patreon when uh, in 2029 when we finally roll that well, out well you have one of you, one of your pals was requesting it too because she says that we always censor you and she wants to hear what kind of wacky shit that we censor. <laughs> uh, and i will reiterate that yeah the things that are cut are purely one to make michael miserable and two don't need to see the light of day they on don't. the internet they don't because uh in case this is where we get to finally pull the uh, the veil back a bit in case y'all don't know there is a part of reality that is present here but a lot of this is us turned to 11 it's kind of hyperbolic is we're, we're all kind of playing characters to an extent in that this is a manifestation of our personalities but we're trying to be funny so i don't necessarily feel as angry and vitriolic about republicans <laughs> as you might assume by listening to these shows i do but it's funny at the time and you know so we we enjoy popping off i mean i i hate everyone equally we've talked about this yes 40, so i 40, you know uh, 40 is the new uh, misanthrope yeah exactly but uh, john is in fact this fixated on assholes but uh, other than that <laughs> i've also seen every cock on the planet and that's true <laughs> that's a lot of chickens man oof all right, Michael. Do you have need one you, of them Popeyes? I'll check. Have you check for me real quick and see if you received yeah, all I've of those? Gotten, uh, three, four, five, six. You have two <laughs> TikTok and a TikTok. Okay, perfect. That's everything. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Again, back uh, to make the point as Courtney is uh, recalibrating herself. Uh, congratulations, Michael. I think you are a far more eloquent individual <laughs> as we have progressed, and this has yeah. probably helped to improve your public speaking immensely. Oh, most certainly. Yeah. You're leaps you... and bounds better than the original pilot that you sent me for the science. Oh, my God. That's not even in the same universe comparatively. Not to, you know, speak no. ill of the dead. But yeah, that, that <laughs> podcast, I got 10 minutes into it and I sent John a message. I was like, well, we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever this is, this is not what we're doing, but I can I can make this work. Right. Oh, my God. So I do want to know, like, was there any conversation prior to starting the, rec like, hitting record about what was going to happen? Um, for In episode one and two, yes. Um, we had initially, I, I had given at least a bit of a game plan where it wasn't broad by any stretch. Uh, I think I essentially told Michael and John's like, um, just I'll start. I'll intro the show and then I'll pitch to you, Michael, to give what the concept is. And then you can just take us from there. And then John and I will color. Uh, that was basically it. It wasn't like we had a 20 minute powwow. It, it was after those first couple episodes that we then <laughs> created a document, which still lives today, which I'm sure Michael's the only one who looks at it. But we wrote out what the format of the show was. Yeah, for yeah, a while. yeah, yeah. What? I didn't find that in the drive. I got to look that up. That's hilarious. It's only Michael's. Uh, he. It's not in the disinformed uh, one. It is a <laughs> Michael owned document. <laughs> yeah, but but in the in the document there is a document I think in our shared drive that we originally used so we could all pitch each other ideas. That's a part like, of that document. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that the Michael the document? Thing. That's the yes. Michael document. Oh yep. wow, yeah. There's a treasure trove in there. I um, feel so left out. I've been here a year. Well, it's because we don't use it. Time. We don't fucking use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, we haven't touched it uh, since. I mean, because again, we know what the format is by now, and most of the time, I think it's uh, part of the fun is not letting everyone know what we're thinking of conceptually. I, I think, think we start getting cagey about it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, I'm that just and I love the behind the scenes shit. I think it's hilarious. Um so yeah, I mean that really comparatively and we've talked about this previously, but I think like Michael that was really the first conversation you and I had ever had. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we had been in the room together and exchanged pleasantries at shows and things, but like Michael and I had never actually had any discourse back and forth beyond like, yeah, hi, yeah, I think we can do this. Yeah, this sounds fun. I, I like the concept. Let's do this. Let's do that. And so you get to kind of get an organic sort of like, and probably for John as much as well. John and I knew each other really well at that point, And I'm sure that, you know, both of us kind of got to know Michael over the course of the show, and he just, you know, blossoms like a little bud. Aww. The way you blossom, like a flower. <laughs> a dead flower. 
He is beauty. <laughs> he is grace. He has got bees on his face. He's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who who Beautiful. came up with the original name? Disinformed podcast. Who who's credited with wasn't that a, one? Was that a so vote? The, the funny yeah, was... part is, we actually I don't think we decided um, for a minute. We were going between disinformation podcast and disinformed. Mm-hmm. So I actually have old folders and stuff that are, that are called disinformation podcast. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it might have been you, Shane. Yeah, it's I, I had been joking about it that um, there's a soul coughing lyric. Uh, it's a Mike Dowdy line. This is, I was once, uh, misinformed about your intentions and I, I misheard misinformed <laughs> as disinformed. Ah. And so I ran with that for a long time and I was like, well, this perfectly encapsulates what Michael's talking about, which is the idea that, you know, if you, if you believe hard enough, it's actually true. So I, I thought, well, I gaslit myself for about, you know, 15 years, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> and I thought no one else is using it because it's technically not a word common in the lexicon these days. And then... <laughs> Suddenly, someone became a president, and the world was most certainly met by disinformation <laughs> afterward. And much yep. yelling from you all ensued. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. But I, I really think you guys could have gone with a more apt name, especially after listening to the first episode, because um, I would have called it the Mansplaining Podcast. Uh, because oh, no. when we open up on that podcast, Shane does his whole thing. He introduces the show. He gives the premise. And then John is like, I can give the premise too. Does the exact same spiel, except he adds in that it's exactly like another podcast he listens to that does a segment <laughs> called Yes, Yes, No. John immediately gives two very precise reasons while it is nothing like Yes, Yes, No. This is followed by Michael finally getting a chance to explain his podcast. He does that, and then Shane comes back in again <laughs> to clarify what Michael had said. <laughs> and as a woman, I was just blown away by the lack of communication between the three of you idiots. Well, see, I feel like the answer to that is because I don't see gender. So I didn't. <laughs> I know I have tits, okay? It's a thing. We'll just move on. So you say mansplaining. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I bet you don't. (laughs) Well, allow me to explain. Uh, (laughs) If you motherfuckers had just shut up and let me get the show started, we would have been fine. (laughs) Yeah, once... I do feel like we 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 uh, had a conversation about getting the fuck out of our own way. (laughs) At some point or another, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that the the ending point of that conversation was just let fucking Shane do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a bad call. Give, the- give the best voice in the room a chance. <laughs> no, I think that's more we hold to the principle of if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. And that, that has been a rule with Shane for a good long while, which is if you piss me off, I'll scorch the earth. And it makes everybody far more uncomfortable than they would be otherwise. Like a fucking furless Chewbacca. Yep. <laughs> uh, and the best part about episode one is Michael goes on to tell us that like he believed in liquid mozzarella cheese. And so the mm-hmm. whole thing should be that the podcast should be talking about things you like can bullshit about with like no pregame. Like you can just go in and this is the topic that you know. And Michael right. immediately yeah. chooses to do a topic that I don't think he knew anything about until he was preparing for this episode. Am I wrong on that? Uh, yeah, we did talk about trying and, to freeform it. And what's what's yeah. the topic that you think he uh, wasn't yeah. well informed on? Well, what is the topic Do of episode one? Oh, no, no, I know. The first I'm episode it. is I'm, Dixieland. I know. I'm baiting it for the audience, you fuck. I, no, <laughs> fuck that. I don't I, bait anyone. Dude, it's even also, myself. it's not outside the realm of possibility that you don't remember what the fucking <laughs> topic was. <laughs> I solemnly promise for the rest of this episode, if I do not know the episode that's referenced, I will let you know honestly. Like, I'll All right. be like, I have no fucking idea that that happened. I'll, I'll be honest. Nope, I will be completely honest because uh, this just happened downstairs where I even went to the store today to pick tortillas up for, for Becky. And and I knew what she was making. And then as I'm about to come up here for, for uh, the podcast, I was like, Hey, what's for dinner? She goes, you're fucking joking, right? I was like, no, I literally don't remember. She goes, I sent you to the store for tortillas for the peanut wraps. I go, oh, 
Peter Rouse, nice. <laughs> <laughs> It's good that you're inclusive. That's really nice. Yeah. Anyway. I want the peanut wraps. I'll give you one. (laughs) Uh, I have a nut allergy. Not anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you an injection for it. Hold on. (laughs) I think what made this the perfect first episode for you guys was Michael was clearly trying to pander to the musicians in the room and trying to like really stake his claim as also a fellow musician who played flute one time. And um, <laughs> this um, this episode also gives us the first slip of Michael's tongue. Michael, do you want to pull up clip two? Oh, yes. Does anybody sure. know what that first word was that Michael could not say? There's been a hundred million since I've heard <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in a fog on that one. Yeah. I almost uh, made us have to have another woohoo here, but I stopped myself. <laughs> 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 All right. Then you have a piano and a ba- banjo. I almost said banjo. Banjo. Yeah. Bon- bon Jovi. <laughs> the banjo. The banjo. <laughs> where the squatty potty is utilized as a slide. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. <laughs> also, squatty Bonjo. potty was endorsed by this podcast. <laughs> episode one. I did take note of that. So actually, I will have to post pictures of my serial killer notes as I was reading through or going back through episodes and just like doing stuff and taking oh notes. God. But I did note that John was very upfront about how he feels about bathroom time. And like first episode made sure everybody else yeah. knew that that's a very mm-hmm. special time for him. So I appreciate the mm-hmm. honesty, John. It's the last bit of American freedom. I, I really do think John has got like shitter baiting on the list of tattoos he's going to get before he's 30. No, if I resisted the urge. Urch- <laughs> okay, so here's why I know that. Well, one, I'm already already 30. Uh, I know that. I, just you. <laughs> I, when Skyrim first came out, the roommate that I was living with, we made a, a pact that we were going to get a tattoo of an arrow through our knees. Because it was an inside joke to Skyrim. Yep. Uh, and we never got those tattoos. And that's how I know I'll never get a uh, shitter bait tattoo is because it sounds great. It sounds hilarious, (laughs) but there are lines. Well, John, um, the next time you fall asleep around me, you're going to get a prison tat of shitter bait on the small of your back. So get ready. Well, the funny thing about my lower back is that it's located on my cock, Shane. (laughs) <laughs> well then i can't guarantee i'll have the skill to be able to do a tattoo of that size my eyesight's starting to go on me i am getting older i am 972 after all that's right <laughs> see we'll roast ourselves Courtney. i you know don't i don't have even to do have anything. to try i just have to get point you in a direction and you're like a bunch <laughs> of like hound dogs on the hunt we oh, are yeah. hate tanks it takes a little <laughs> provocation to get us angry thing, at each other the thing that people need to understand is that the well for hating people doesn't it never goes dry but the people that we hate the most are ourselves i have endless amounts of content oh Indeed. 100%. and some of the people some of the people we love go dry <laughs> through no fault of their own and uh, it's just because we don't we don't quite get them there any longer and that's why you got to buy a little like butter to put on the tips of the noses of your dogs so mm-hmm. they're, they're not, All right. Okay. <laughs> no. That's not where bad I was job. expecting that to go. That was actually a really wholesome joke about making sure that your dogs uh, don't have cracked dry noses. Oh, okay. While beautiful. they lick your asshole. You guys, you guys take it to a sexual place. So. <laughs> oh, I do have another question for you guys. How many episodes were pre-written? Because I know you used to batch record. How many episodes were we batch recording at a time? And how far ahead were episodes pre-written when you first started? Well, when we launched, when we officially launched the show, we had like a month of content. Didn't yeah, I think we had else? six yeah. episodes in the can initially before we even made anything live. And we batched mm-hmm. record. Uh, that was the premise originally before they realized how lazy I am in group projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, where each the, the the homework was we're going to meet up every three weeks or whatever the fuck. And each one of us is going to have a 30, 45 minute topic. And we're going to be in this room for a good long while. But then, you know. You're, you're you're free for a week and then if i'm remembering correctly one of us i think it might have been me was uh, talking about how i wanted to be more topical because it was really fun when we were talking about things that just happened within the week mm-hmm. and also i was lazy what what did i miss i missed a big part 
Uh, it was because I think it was right after you did um, the Saint, uh, the Mount Everest. Episode. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Because we wanted it to be more like at the time it was occurring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we wanted to get all those those clicks from the people yeah. that were interested in being told happened. the non factual information <laughs> about that thing that they're interested yeah. in. True that. So, uh, to your to answer your question, we would record three episodes at a time. Usually, okay. uh, occasionally that would waffle, but th- yeah, that became the standard fare for a while until COVID, and then we just took to recording every week. And Perfect. what therapy it was. <laughs> it is the cheapest kind. Uh, the reason I ask is because in the first episode, there was a lot of foreshadowing for future episodes. Um, it and I found this like so entertaining because we got references to Drew Carey being in the WWE Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Kurt Cobain mentioned, Ozzy Osbourne, Richard <laughs> Simmons. Like y'all were like, "Hey, if you like this episode, here's the next seventeen. Good night." You're not wrong. <laughs> also, for like the third episode in a row right now, I'm gonna say it's the being a master of your own continuity. True. Uh, Also, we uh, had even more foreshadowing in the second episode as well, because that's where my immortal first reared its ugly head. And oh shoot, yeah, we we had a lot of seeding there. But again, that was us getting to know each other, so it was kind of gauging what everybody's actual interests were for topics. And I'm sure that you do have things in your script coming up to humble us back down, because I'm not trying to stroke our cocks too much. But I think (laughs) something that uh, Shane and Michael do a really good job of is actually paying attention to what we have said on the show. And being on top of everybody else, me, um, or just reminding me like, hey, didn't you say you wanted to talk about the thing? And be like, oh, yeah, fuck. OK. You know, like keeping each other on the rails because we all get very excited, you know, and, you know, our interest, you know, sparks into other areas. And, you know, the both of them are really good at, you know, putting everyone back on a lane, I think. Bless you. Thank you. Wow. That's the nicest thing I've ever heard out of your mouth, John. I know. I know. <laughs> now you'll never hear it again. Uh, we also get in that episode, obviously, our first lie. And um, Michael, stop trying to make them like you by putting in music lies because it was really yeah. funny. Anyways, yeah. uh, do you remember what the first lie was on the show? Was it was it a lie about a trombone? No. About putting the trombone in? No. Your lie was basically like, so during the episode, I told you that jazz lines during improv are like super complex, but actually they're super simple, just like John. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, Michael, that's a terrible lie. Like, what What are you doing? I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> in this dick. <laughs> they, they, oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Did you just no, I, climax or <laughs> uh, <laughs> once per week? Damn it, guys! Do you know how many sex sounds there are in the clips file? So many. Oh, so many. We could <laughs> we could make a whole animated movie. Let me tell you. If if you actually had a catalog like cataloged list, I could do like the same kind of Randy Savage uh, supercut where it's nothing but sex noises. <laughs> Maybe I'll see if I can find a like a linked tempo between it. And oh, then perfect! That's what I make the beat out of you know, like you're about drops. to bring me to the boiling point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to start working on that because I I truly think there's a missed opportunity with the clip folder. Uh, but the clip don't fit. <laughs> so I would say episode five is really our first payoff to all of the topics that were mentioned in episode one. Um, I personally would have never thought that I would listen to like an hour plus on WWE because it's not something that I'm interested in. But the funny thing about it is going back and listening to it, I remember exactly where I was the first time I listened to it. Like the memory was strong. (laughs) Well, I will note uh, for my own to, uh, to humble myself a bit. Our first episodes naturally are our big download episodes like there's a, a glut yeah and in the middle of all <laughs> these that, that are one. over that one is still the most <laughs> minuscule of like the first 12 to 20 episodes no one gave a shit so i'm glad you remembered because no one else cared 
Well, the I think the big part of why I remembered was my dad in his early 20s was constantly mistaken for Jake the Snake. And so being like, oh, I guess that's related to this. I've never cared about WWE ever. Um, but also just finding out that Drew Carey made it into the shittiest Hall of Fame and like the origins of that was really entertaining. I mean, go find the clips. It's delightful to watch him get abused physically. <laughs> And this episode actually gave us the origin of a very long-running co-opted joke between John and I. Um, So, Michael, have you played clip three? Okay. And this might sound familiar to anyone who's listened to more recent episodes. Um, Yeah, I think that's kind of the plan. Just, like, kind of cultivate some episodes, release them a little bit, give us some time, see what's going on, see if you uh, enjoy it, hate it. Um, In which case, I have Shane's email... Uh, and if you want to just let us know somehow, I'll give you Shane's email, uh, home address. Yeah, I'm happy number. for you all to hit my spam filter. Um, I'm blood so type. ready for this. <laughs> blood type, I'll let you know. Apparently giving out people's personal details has been a long time coming on this show. Oh, yeah. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I'm worry. There. I have a nice cancel me daddy clip for later, Shane, just for you. Oh, Ooh. is it the uh, is it the climax of our episode? <laughs> clip? I mean, it's one that made you uncomfortable, John. I did keep your commentary in on the end of that clip. It was a lot very of things good. make me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I live. <laughs> you know, in I fact, live in a state of discomfort. <laughs> that's well documented on this show because you've gone over like seventeen things that you're afraid of, and like I don't know why you're putting that fuel out there for people. Like you're afraid of getting out of the shower and somebody talking to you you're afraid of a snake coming up the toilet you're afraid of somebody noticing that you're high like the amount of things you're afraid of like (laughs) i think you need therapy i do need therapy (laughs) (laughs) also what the fuck is on your patio right now (laughs) i heard more phantom noises last night but again i had taken i had taken one of becky's edibles and I, i i tried to like really uh be like like puff my chest out i walked in to grab an edible and she gave me one i was like no where's the other one so i took two and she goes see you tomorrow <laughs> uh yeah it was it was it was fun but i was here and shit so don't don't tell me there's things on the patio <laughs> careful oh uh, another glorious thing we got from that episode which i did not do my due diligence and did not clip nor did i look up the um context frankly i don't think is needed at one point, Shane goes, I don't want ants in my vagina. And I just, <laughs> that's a great quote. I just think everybody should not want ants in their vagina. I'm sure that he said that, but just because it is the show. Is that bullshit? No. No, that, that, that's okay, true. I, that does sound a little familiar. <laughs> I was channeling my future Stephen King adoration for revival. I want ants in my vagina. Truly. Um, I have to say, though, that perhaps the episode that really like pulled me in um, from the early days was episode seven. Goop. Bullshit. <laughs> no. <laughs> because Ouch. this episode was genuinely funny in like an embarrassing way. Like, you're like, I think I'm enjoying this, but I think I'm laughing at them and not with them, but I'm still into it. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, episode seven, this is the clip here. Um, go ahead and pull up clip four. This is a, a excellent case of Shane giving us a hashtag cancel me daddy moment. Oh, shit. It's already God, so if soon. we do this, we're going to be here all night if we keep letting me put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, <laughs> your your half acre beer company uh, sticker there. Yeah. Remind me that, yeah, a half acre to me is normally when I indicate that I need to ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> If one uh, side of my ball sack is starting to argue with me, I'm like, it's time to top her off. Being in the vicinity of you coming at least once, maybe seven times, uh-huh. can confirm. Yes. Uh, you could blast a hole in someone's chest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And who hasn't filmed themselves with a slow-mo app while you ejaculate? I mean, really. It's the only reason they created it. I mean, yeah, I thought it was a rite of passage. Yeah, yeah. And it's I actually mean, how Steve Jobs died. The only time I really ever offended somebody was because I was doing it on that slow-witted kid that used to live down below me. So... 
Well, I mean... He thought it was bird droppings. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Silly, simple son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, what is the... Uh... I don't condone this. <laughs> I'm not even here right now. <laughs> I'm in my own world. I, I condemned it, but... Uh... <laughs> oh my fucking God, I forgot about that. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> so when I said earlier... That, you know uh, that we play characters. <laughs> uh, that wasn't an example. <laughs> Did you know that I'm partly a lawyer and that's why I threw in phrases to indemnify myself? Uh, that's fun. <laughs> My name's John and I technically am not even here right now mentally. <laughs> I'm I... like Brick fucking Tamlin and Anchorman. <laughs> I'm over there trying to console the kid. I'm like, goddamn pigeons. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, the thing about Shane is, like, if he was ever arrested and they were like, you can plead the fifth, he wouldn't know how. Like, his mouth would just keep going and it would be like, oh, well, there it is, folks. You're like, we weren't going to arrest you, but now. What now? Eventually, you're going to laugh, motherfucker. I guarantee <laughs> it. Just, I'll keep plumbing. <laughs> Oh my it's God. the Family Guy law of diminishing returns. Is like if it it was funny the first three times, let me do it another twenty, and eventually it'll go around to being funny. Yeah, that was too fucking good. <laughs> and at the time, based on where I was with my personal self and religious beliefs, I was just in horror that somebody was saying this in a recorded medium. And I think that also is what pulled me in more. I was like, what else are they going to say that's going to just totally cause them problems later on in their lives? And yeah. uh, it Joke's on you. I have no aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but very quickly into that episode, Michael really overshadows that joke and just hits us really hard with jade egg content and vaginals. <laughs> Um, I tried multiple times to count how many times Michael said vaginal in that episode instead of vaginal. I couldn't mm -hmm. do it because I would just giggle too hard every single time that like I couldn't get a real count. Um, so Michael, I'll have you play clip five because clip you guys five. corrected him like at least six times. I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, All right. So we have the food. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, go ahead. we go have ahead. the food stamp challenge. Okay, and then I we also see that have... on Southern McClintock every week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take my EBT at this subway? <laughs> <laughs> Do you take EBT at a liquor store? Oh man, not that. That just sounds okay. And then the last one is the vi uh, the vaginal weightlifting, which is the let's Jade. do it. Okay, vaginal so, weightlifting. Do you want me to do yeah. both, or do you want me to do? I just mean, the one. please go go for it. Do whatever you want. Okay, so we're in I'm splitting here. the difference. <laughs> um, I vote just Jade Egg. Okay, okay. Fine. all right, all right. Jade that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'm intrigued by the food stamp challenge, though. So okay. I'm let's I'm... see how we feel. Okay, right. yeah, I'll do the vaginal. Wait. <laughs> yeah, you will. I had to. I had to. Vaginal. It vaginal. doesn't. Vaginal. I had to really think too hard about that. that Pussy. That, <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Pussy weightlift. Oh, that sounds. That sounds way different context there. I still stand by that joke. <laughs> <laughs> but Michael, what is it about the word vaginal that really just chokes you up, bud? What is that with? Any word I mispronounce subsequent is is probably the the modern day version it. of it. Fuck me, you cleared it. Ha ha. You know what I will say though, Michael, is actually in the early days you mispronounced a lot fewer things. I actually think that these two have really caused a descent into madness for you, and I think it's affected some of your recent choices. Just something to consider. You. That or the blatant alcoholism. <laughs> uh <laughs> why not both? <laughs> Why not? <both? laughs> Can confirm. Um, another one of my favorite parts about episode seven was really getting to know John's sense of humor, because in this episode, he really lays it on us like what he thinks is funny and what he thinks is not funny. Um, so, Michael, I'll have you remind us of a recent bit from John in that TikTok um, that I just sent. And then we'll go back okay. to the clip from episode seven about how John really feels and his character regression. I tell you guys that we, we, I started a, a game or a new phrase with uh, my coworker. It's bringing back no pussy, but you throw on your uh, your New Jersey accent with it. 
So it's what? like customers that are weak as fuck. It's like <laughs> they give no pussy, no pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Like no <laughs> pussy, you get no pussy, no, no pussy. It was, no it was, pussy. it was really no, no pussy, no pussy. <laughs> it's such a good insult. Oh. Hashtag <laughs> <Please>. no pussy, <laughs> no pussy, yeah. no pussy. <laughs> and then I'll have you pull up clip six. Oh no. Or you hear those, sloshing noises. It's got that black fish that you keep in to you know keep the Let's sides see. of your aquarium clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you put a salamander in it, and then it's just you know, it's fine. A recurring joke should have a little more tact than just yelling <laughs> "pussy." <laughs> should, but it won't. I don't think he yelled that at all during that uh, vaginal weightlifting. She, I didn't. He didn't once. No. And I've been saying it incorrectly. It's a bit on vaginal. the nose. Hmm. Vaginal? Vaginal. 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 Vagina. Um, she was you... the typist in our pool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well. And you said vaginal again. <laughs> yeah. That you know, I did. I'll, I'll take it, though. That means I stopped taking things so seriously. <laughs> How many more times do you think you've had yelling pussy as a like recurring joke? I would never yell pussy. <laughs> he he saw the genius in it after a while. He, you know, he came around to my way of thinking. You know what? I have a theory. I think that I was well and fine, that I was adjusted even slightly uh, mm -hmm. towards you know neutral good, if not good. And then COVID happened, and that's not what, <laughs> that, what that's not what took me off. That's not it. That's not. But that's the circumstance that put the podcast in the f like in the front of my view. And I think that the moment we started doing My Immortal is when <laughs> my brain did a go commit die. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I love talking about shit and eating shit. And then I was like, Your you know what's really, really funny? flared up. Yeah, you know what, what a fucking a good punchline is? Pussy with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think doing My Immortal and reading bad fanfic, and I think it's Michael's fault. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. Corrupting you very opinions, effectively sleuthed that out, my friend. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, that's not a theory; it's confirmed. Yeah, I've I've never been the same since. It's been fact checked. To, uh, I watch fight videos yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> to quote Michael, "Your real Bruce Bane." <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> oh my god! Now, I wish more than anything, I could have gone episode by episode, just bringing you the highlights, bringing you those clips. Unfortunately, we Lord. don't have time for that. So I'm just going to go through an, a quick blitz of different episodes that I really enjoyed um, and just rag on you some more. Mm, cool. Okay. Um, cool. Episode 25, World Worst Fan Fiction. John, you ate that shit up. Like nobody's business. You were so excited and so in love with the idea of it, reading it, being a part of it. Like you wanted this. Your love That's is bullshit. so fleeting, you sick bastard. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> That's absolute bullshit. That's a lie. <laughs> Go back and listen to 25 and just hear how much John is eating this up and Shane is fucking pissed that Michael is even speaking. How the turntables. It is so funny. Yeah, by the end of that, we, we felt completely differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I have watched you fuck a goth girl before, so I mean, I'm prepared for that change to have occurred. <coughs> you're, you're and Michael tears, was yeah. just like, but I like it. But I, I really like it. It's really great. Please. And I honestly think one of the best things you guys ever did was the full reading of My Immortal. It was hysterical. I agree. Shameless plug. <laughs> it's on Bandcamp. You should go listen to it. It's Furthermore, like shame on me for letting myself be subjected to that shit. And then I have the nerve, <laughs> the outright audacity to browbeat John for not being <laughs> wholly invested by the time we get through three readings. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a temporary sort of insanity, I think, that Michael's finally managed to get me under his sway, where I'm like, it's good content, right? <laughs> um, Michael, how much editing took place to get the My Immortal episodes like as the tail end of a regular episode? Because what I've heard 
is that the amount of giggling and laughing and swearing and yelling (laughs) that had to be cut out was like a good chunk. You want to talk about (laughs) Patreon content? (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Yeah, I would probably say that it took me almost about the same length as a normal episode edit uh, to edit down those so that they were just a straight read with no, like, laughing. And I think the longest section that we cut out i think was one of the later ones oh my god And it was like a four or five minute just clip (laughs) where we just ranted about it and lost control and we we had to like center ourselves and get back i think what happened is that there were so many moments that we were going you're gonna have to woohoo that one to the point where like he's gotta dump the whole thing like this is (laughs) you can't keep any of that shit also, uh, like for context, it's important to note that we were doing that at, like at the end of the episode. So we were delirious by the time we even <laughs> got to trying to read it. And then it's insane. So like it, trying to keep a straight face through any of that was just an impossibility. We lost listeners. <laughs> like legit, not, not even jokes. Like legitimately, yep. I, I've had at least two people be like, yeah, I mean, I did listen, but you guys do some fucking like silly shit at the end of every show, and I wasn't into it, so you know, I just don't log in. No. I think that you know dumb people because you could just stop at the end of the normal episode and not be a prick, but you know, that's just yeah. my hot take. I mean, we kind of just immediately say, and that's the episode, and then <laughs> immediately start reading with with no stoppage or any of that stuff. So uh yeah, that, that I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if if you're not catch paying attention all of a sudden, what I'm listening to some silly shit. <laughs> I don't know what this is. As uh, John is so fond of saying, you are the master of your own continuity. So True. Anywho. <laughs> um episode 14, I would have never thought I gave a shit about Richard Simmons or his whereabouts, but I'm very invested now i'm very concerned about him i've not done any follow-up but i hope he's doing okay (laughs) um all of the religion and cult-based episodes are probably like if there was a master list of those those would probably be my favorites um so like levee and satanism pastafarianism young earth creationism satanic temple like those are all really fun episodes well done thank you um I'm really glad that you guys did replace Mr. Mackey from South Park with Michael at some point, I think around episode 10, um, because if I had to hear MK one more time, I was going to kill myself. (laughs) Yeah, where normal people would have um as their sort of verbal tick that gets them from one train of thought to another, Michael's is MK. Okay. But hey, you're better now. You've been healed. Congratulations. (laughs) How much Thank effort you. did that take? Uh, being unable to pronounce other words now. <laughs> it was a trade-off. It's, it's a tick. It's just a different one now. One, one, yeah. one power diminishes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my monkey's paw. Yeah. I didn't know what I was giving up to get rid of the MK. I can't get so hard good. and I aggressively fuck the English language. Tell me how that makes sense. <laughs> and refer back to episode 25 he's not okay <laughs> and that's a damn fact and some of the, one, of the ones i didn't write down but i'm thinking about now um the stanford tree why why was that an episode <laughs> that was terrible i didn't like it um yeah that was i'm gonna say that that was testing the waters because i started running out of other things that i was interested in at the time and yeah. Let's just make a blanket I, sweep. Nothing good happens at Stanford. Oh, yes. Neither it's their prison true. experiments nor their mascots. There's no good comes of it. Yeah. Yeah, that one was rough. Um, I think the one that will always live in most infamy, though, is homeopathy. Um, I don't think you'll ever live that down. I'm really sorry about it. But you want to take a stab homeopathy. at it? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Um, and then I have to say, probably one of my most favorite lies, and I would still buy a t-shirt with this, is um, birds aren't real and sea life should also be questioned. Um, I think that was probably <laughs> one of the funniest things that John has ever said. It's only been downhill since. Thank you. I peaked early. Yeah. <laughs> a hell of a peak, though. Uh, Proud of those units. 
And then my other, my favorite like series of like, let's do multiple parts was obviously Colonel Sanders, but I can't talk about that because I was on air for those. Right, right, right. So that's technically cheating. Um, I think my favorite episode will actually be Deer Hunter Part 2 because I didn't like Deer Hunter Part 1. It was really boring. Um, Oh my fucking dick. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember anything from that episode and I didn't listen to it again. Good. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> yeah, so part two. Part, finish the story. Finish the story. Go on a website. <laughs> Read a Damn. fucking synopsis. We, we need you to tell us, John. Otherwise, I won't do Otherwise? it. He comes back after the war, pretending to be his dead brother. He fucks a bunch of bitches, blackmails a priest. It doesn't go his way, and he kills himself after killing the priest who killed his lover. Boom, we're done. Clip that. It's episode two, Deer Hunter. <laughs> Upload that as a John week. We're good. We've got another episode. Um, Hell yeah. In, a, Fall in addition to that, I did find another clip where John was going to do like a whole episode on how Wesley Snipes was going to do a Black Panther movie. I did do that episode. Oh, yeah. But there was like a... Cl- did, I have though. a clip from that episode, though, where there was something else you were going to do. I don't remember now off the top of my head what it was. But there is, there's a lot of things that you just have not paid off, John, and I'm really upset about it. Yeah, so, talk about getting excited. Some of this, like, even right now, like, I'm still, I'm, fuck. I probably listened to, like, at least eight hours worth of content on uh, Solomon and the Testament of Solomon and the Lesser Keys of Solomon. And the main thing that prevents me from executing how fun it is in my head to, to page is that it feels like it's infinitely going to be boring. Like, the, the, there's going to be no entertainment value in it at all. Um, well, that's why you got to write jokes into it. I'm not and, shamed. And get frustrated, <laughs> like I do. You're and also Michael, not Michael. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, yeah. So, yeah, I believe that there's a lot of things I haven't paid off. That, that, <laughs> that makes sense. And I think, I think there's a lot of good content, because when you really buckle down, it's good stuff. Oh, I, I have a lot of fun on the ones that I uh, follow up on. No, I, I think as we have talked about it, part of the great injustice of this show is that John, contrary to what his perception is of himself, does an excellent job presenting things that are in his wheelhouse. Like, I really enjoyed and learned a lot from the Satanic Temple episode. Like, I feel oh, like yeah. there are mm-hmm. moments when you are when you hit your stride, like you're really great. It just you talk yourself out of a lot of those things. And so it's, you know. One of those. It's just because we, we finish our recordings and then I pull up TikTok or Instagram and I see all these goddamned <laughs> child prodigies. <laughs> nice reference there. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for saying so. <laughs> In the uh, words of a friend of mine, after he listened to me go on like a 10 minute rant about another human being, you went, you know, you really just got to stop comparing yourself to other people, man. <laughs> That's very fair. Oh. And I, I would take the time to roast Shane on his episodes, but he just does that by talking and by describing his penis in graphic details to the point that we've all seen it, but we didn't consent to it. Thank you for mm-hmm. that, Shane. I have I not mean, seen it, but I have felt it. Let's also be clear. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. So congratulations, <laughs> motherfucker. It's on a milk carton somewhere and I'm still trying to track it down. So if anybody has knowledge of its whereabouts, we'll give you Michael's address. <laughs> when, you can, when, can, when he can afford canvas, he, uh, he buys it, stretches it out, gets some paint and watercolors out and then takes a picture. And then he tries to recreate it, and that's that's how he can describe it so well, is that he sees it so clearly in his mind's eye. Mm-hmm. A true artist reminds at me work. Of, is like uh, Doctor Who, the the one human being that ceases to be an actual you know human being and is just like a hyper extended oh, part yeah. of their mm-hmm. body that's just skin with a face grafted onto it. Oh, that's what I pictured actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, that's yeah. now my Cassandra or whatever. Yes, Cassandra. Just yeah, moisten me. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing I'd like to address with you all is when coming up with the rules of the podcast it seemed like in the first like 10 episodes nobody knew what was going on um at first you were only allowed to have three lies and then you were only allowed to take stabs at the end of the episode and then you were only allowed a certain number of stabs because we don't want to get too crazy what what was going on with that what what was the thought process there there wasn't I was trying to turn it into a game show 
<laughs> they're trying to make it like game show actually have rules and everything uh-huh. like that, like get points and everything. Uh, and then we decided that there was no fun in that. Yeah. And that's why we don't keep score. No. And that's one of the reasons why it's uh no. You're putting a nice sheen on this. <laughs> this motherfucker wanted us to take notes. Oh. I shit a you not. He's sitting there telling John and me that like you should write down you know, the things that you think are lies as as the person's talking, and then you can bring it up at the end of the show, because if you interrupt the flow of the person's train of thought, then the episode, you know, it's it's just going to get laborious. And I was like, that's actually when it's fun. Is when we go off the rails on your As ship. we've proven by Michael for a long time espousing the belief that his episodes were the best because John and I would just rip him a new asshole <laughs> the <laughs> entirety of his presentation, <laughs> and those were when the funny times would happen, not his written-in jokes. And uh... I personally live for Michael's written-in jokes because of how funny he yes. thinks they are. It's adorable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And here I wrote. <laughs> I just want someone to understand because I don't. Um, I have one more little bit here and then we're going to get into the conspiracy theory, um, which okay. I'm really excited oh, I about. about that. Um, but I want to know the uh. thought process behind having me on as a guest and then me getting texts every Wednesday from John being like, you busy? You, you want to do you want to do this again? What what happened behind the scenes there? Why did you keep having me back? Because I'm not entertaining in the least. I mean, I'm inclined to agree with you there. I just uh... <laughs> it's just facts. <laughs> John kept saying like we 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 have to have somebody on here who is aesthetically pleasing for our video content, and uh, frankly, I don't want to run our social networks anymore. So you think that we can connive this person into doing it for free? And I went, yeah, probably. That's literally exactly what happened. Yeah, precisely and what that happened. that is canon. <laughs> canon. No, it was so much fun to have you on. We had a, we had a good experience. Oh, we learned a lot with Dewan as our first guest. And we, <laughs> and it really. Uh, Justice for Bible episode 52. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> and not to say that it wasn't fun, because I had no, fun, it, but then afterwards there we... was fun bits for sure. But Michael yeah. was robbed of an anniversary episode, and I stand by it. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, and also after... let's before we get too far afield, I don't want to cut you off, John, but I'm cutting you off by <laughs> saying I I love Dewan to pieces. Yes, part of he's the running. The best. As we've mentioned, we bust each other's balls. This is part of the joke. He has so, a yes, successful but, podcast uh, called Country Brothers. Go. <laughs> Go listen to that. Yes, go check it out. If you want to Uh, listen to him be uh, coherent and funny, unlike he is on our show, (laughs) go check out Country Brothers. It's great. Yeah, well, I... Anyway. (laughs) We had a a come to Jesus talk where Shane was like, yo, you were really fucking rude on on that episode. And I was like, you're you're right. I listened back to it and that was not a good look at all. Um, But then for a while, like, we didn't even think about guests at all. We were just like, fuck that. Like, it didn't... Thought thought it would kill and it didn't really so whatever and then when we had you on we're like oh this clicked there was like this natural chemistry because you'd listen to the show a lot like you knew the format um, and then every week it, I, wasn't there a running bit where I would ask like because you weren't on there I'd be like isn't that right Courtney and uh-huh. then eventually we're like like why no, don't we just bring her fucking on like there there's no no point in not doing it and you're despite what you say uh, you're quite funny and articulate so. Um, you're very effervescent. You're a lot of fun to have around. And furthermore, you were actually contributing episodes, which some of the dead weight on this show has <laughs> ceased to do. So Michael and I needed a break. And yeah. uh, you excellently facilitate that role. Oh, shucks. Well, this was my last episode, so it was really fun to be here and Bye. to do this with you for a year. Um, I changed all the oh, passwords, shit. so good luck. Um I really just wanted to <laughs> to really leave a nice trail behind me, oh. which is why, Michael, Damn, I could... I'm about to ruin your whole life. Also, I fucked what? Ted. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you about to ruin? Yes, I knew that would get you. <laughs> I just love that you have no fucking clue what he was talking about, so thank you. But uh, yeah, no, good pull, man. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. You fuck Ted! <laughs>
What are you, Michael? What is? What are they talking about? <laughs> Try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, so you were. It was very much a monologue moment leading up to ruining Michael's life, which I'm all about. <laughs> but for a brief second, I could just see you acting as the, uh, I don't remember the actress's name in Breaking Bad when she's talking to Walter White and they've already been having like marital stress, like she knows everything going on. <laughs> and then like a cliffhanger end to an episode is she's like staring at him over this dinner table or like a kitchen island and she goes, I fucked Ted. And then just like cuts to black. <laughs> If you want to end a marriage in a single sentence, that was the way. So, <laughs> and I was like, I was pull. struggling because I could feel that. And I was like, I, if I could just think of the name, I could say this reference, and I think it would just slay Shane. And I was right, and it was a very validating moment. So, also, anyway. I thought we were going to the Goldstone Creamery. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay, you have a conspiracy. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. No, that was beautiful. Um, For legal reasons, I am going to say that this is satire, Um, but if you know the truth, you know the truth. (sighs) Hashtag justice for Michael? (laughs) Yeah, is this a hashtag? No, this is going to be more of like, cancel me forever, daddy. Um, Fuck. So I've been thinking for a long time about Michael's involvement with nefarious activities, because at different points in the show, Michael has what I think was purposely mispronounced Osama bin Laden and Putin. And I was like, you know what? I need to dig into this. I can decode this whole fucking podcast because my mom's crazy and I can channel crazy. Um, It's in there. (laughs) Since Michael is the one behind the show, I decrypted every aspect. So you're going to be shocked to find out who he really is and what he's done. Episode one of this podcast aired on September 20th. If you add up the dates, you get the number 29. Angel number 29 is a message from your angels telling you to trust in your own abilities when it comes to fulfilling your soul's divine purpose. Michael's divine purpose was this podcast to clear his conscience of his guilt. In episode one, Michael mentions that he's not allowed to talk about Pizzagate. That has proven to be a lie in episode 58, where he does a whole fucking episode on Pizzagate. Uh, yeah. Seems a little fishy to me. <laughs> it does seem a little fucking fishy. And it's not a coincidence. It's always been building up to this. Episode 21, Michael discusses the Mandala effect. He's doing this to test you guys, to see how much you'll remember, and if it's true. (laughs) And you know what else is also contributed to false memory? Satanic ritual abuse. Another Michael episode. Okay? Again, not a coincidence. That satanic ritual abuse and QAnon are directly correlated as conspiracy theories. And Michael has an episode on QAnon. Again, not a coincidence. And basically, if we take all of this together, Michael has a lot of ties to QAnon. But that's not where this ends. As you know, this week is the Ghislaine Maxwell trial for her involvement with Jeffrey Epstein. (laughs) And do you know that he died exactly 41 days before this podcast aired for the first time. And as of this <laughs> recording, Michael has recorded 41 topics. That is not a coincidence. Michael killed Jeffrey Epstein. Wake up, sheeple. Um, I think Michael thought he was killing <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein Barr. So... <laughs> Um, uh, furthermore, Michael has also been touting he was going to do an episode on the reptilian elite for ages and ages, that and that true. has and the Illuminati I... was one of John's. So, oh yeah, that's another one that's really hard to to present. Um, uh huh. That's canon now. Yeah. That is all right. That, that's not conspiracy. That's, sure, that's true. Michael you got me, Michael. Yeah, you so... want to figure out how you finally make money? Write the book if I did it. <laughs> In the <laughs> vein of O.J. Simpson, and you can tell everybody what you did to dispatch the Epstein. I just changed their names just for Jeffrey Epstein, just all their names in the whole book. Mm-hmm. I actually, I went through a couple different scenarios of how to make this conspiracy theory come together. Oh my and, God. like, Michael could have presented 42 episodes, and I would have told you that 42 is the number on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is the answer to everything. And basically, at that point, Michael's total downloads were 1983, which is the same year that Hurricane Alicia kills 21 in Texas. And in episode 21, again, we're back to the Mandala effect. Like this, 
it doesn't matter how you look at the evidence. It's there, Michael. We know what you did. He is the root of all evil. Well, shit. All, all I'll say for the record is I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bone. kill again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, just Jeffrey Epstein. I'll just kill just him. Just dig yeah. him up and Ed Gein him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it fits perfect. I have been hanging Jeffrey Epstein's nipples from my uh, mini blinds for the past six months now. And one of the things I forgot to mention is in your fuck, Mary kill, I'm pretty sure that Michael did marry Dahmer. So again, the connections are he didn't know who he was. aggressive, Michael. You've not been subtle at all. Well, I figured someone would find out one way or another. I'm a little disappointed it took 120 <laughs> episodes, but wow! I, I just, I, I just think it's really nice that we've established who the villain of the season is. Because mm-hmm. now we can what? jointly work to take him down. And we call him Captain Coherent Narrative. Because I think because I killed Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> it's oh, now you here. have it on record. <laughs> <laughs> Let that. Yeah, because we got fucking. This blows the case we got wide fucking open. Peener Algernon over here. <laughs> Do what you want. It's it's Peener Greer or Algernon Greer. Thank oh, you. Oh, I'm so sorry. My aliases. Well, to Michael, this it's a nice cumulative of those two names. <laughs> cumulative, yeah. A Portman too. <laughs> if, if you will. I prefer Portman three personally, but that's uh, you know that's it's a, it. it's the better sequel. The final Portman. Good vintage, too. Yes. <laughs> Natalie Portman. <laughs> Revenge of the Portman. <laughs> Natalie Portman, too. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Beyond that's, me. That's what I got for you today, guys. That is um, some of my favorite moments of the early days of the Disinformed podcast and how Michael is the devil. A dizzying trip through our early days. Uh, that was a delightful uh, ending. So but, yes, you you climaxed appropriately, which is something only, that most of get, us don't know about. Do we get all the lies? One? I know we got one. One. <laughs> I think we also missed a clip. I have I have a, an extra clip here that you. What's sent me. what's the one titled there that you have? Uh, Shane makes a promise he cannot keep. Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Let's let's end with that do want, clip. Do you want to do that? Yeah, pre yeah, or yeah. Post lies. Pre or, pre or post lies. Yeah, go ahead. Hit that one. Okay. Everybody knows that this was bullshit from the second it left my mouth. It absolutely was. And that is officially the meanest I'm going to be to Michael in the entire arc of this series, I think. <laughs> and I, out to be that false. is my sentiment for those last two paragraphs there also. That was, that was good. I like that. Brilliant. Lies. Yeah, what, what do we miss? I'm not even going to take stabs. Yeah, I... We got one. We did get one. I but... did try to throw you off about the timeline of the show um, and tell you I was an early adopter, which was not true because John hid this from me for a very long time, as he's known to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I told you in episode one, um, in this is a lie within a list because I had to hit the classics, um, all of the foreshadowing for future episodes. So Drew Carey, Kurt Cobain... Richard Simmons. Ozzy oh, Osbourne was not mentioned in episode one, but he would go Feels, on to get oh. an episode. Feels like was mentioned in that. episode four. Yep, exactly. Like It came up pretty quick. Um, and then the other lie I had for you was about the first lie of the show. Um, Michael's first lie was not about um, how jazz is played. It was actually that he had told you that Storyville was the red light district in Nashville, but it was actually the red light district in New Orleans. And that was the first lie ever on the show. <sighs> Joke's on you that any of us would actually willingly go back and re-listen to that bunch of happy horse shit. I was counting on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, God dang. Well, I guess you are the renowned expert on this uh, beautiful little podcast. Every friend group or family needs like a historian, <laughs> you know? I don't know. That just doesn't... Why? Why would you need a... So you can track everything that's happened in your past so you learn in your future? Why would you want to learn from... Oh, what are you on your... You know, oh, I forgot or... that you're uh, still in your 10th year of college there. <laughs> What is it's learning? <laughs> it's like, wait, so if I learn it the first time, I don't have to go back a second time? 
bullshit. <laughs> Got to get four times just to make sure it's really there in my head. Lemurs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do want to say thank you guys so much for having me this last year and tolerating my sad attempt at jokes and episodes. And I will say as far as the pandemic is concerned, like this is really one of the things that got me through it. Uh, having this like every Wednesday consistent all right, no matter how bad the week has been, I can yell at these three <laughs> for however amount of time, and they will tolerate it. And that's been a nice constant. I do appreciate that a lot. Do you think your therapist listens to the show and applauses? <laughs> no. Lori, if you ever find this, I swear it's working. I just forget everything you've ever um, told me in the yeah. two hours that we record this show You're like i'm working the steps i promise but these guys they're just simple sacks of shit you know <laughs> <laughs> so wait you know Lori? uh-huh oh wow <laughs> i'm uh-oh if you're listening i'm sorry i didn't call you back <laughs> um i'm not <laughs> whoa uh, no, I think we are all, uh, we were under duress for a good portion of that time frame. And yes, this was one of those glorious bits of uh, mercurial nonsense that managed to keep us all interconnected and, and holding it together somewhat. Some strange centrifuge whirling around in between everybody. So thank you all for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, uh, I have a little game for us to play as a, an After Dark if you all are interested. Thoroughly of course. excited. Do it. Well, uh, as always, we're elated to have had you all here, and thank you so much for joining us for another stirring installment of the Disinformed Podcast. Naturally, if you're digging what you are hearing here, you might be a member of this cast later on. You never know. <laughs> But uh, if you're enjoying it, please make sure that you subscribe on your preferred podcast provider app. And of course, we do have marvelous content winging your way both on our TikTok, which you can find in the link tree in the show notes, as well as our YouTube channel, which we update sporadically and enthusiastically. <laughs> As we've evidenced here by a two-hour-long D&D saga, technically in totality almost over three hours. Substantially out of the fucking blue. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, just just pulling stuff out of our Vortex quiver and throwing it into a Taco Bell. And by the way, um, there is not a Taco Bell on Rural and Mill. Yeah, because it's parallel. It's, it's Rural right. and Apache. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> I, I had to pause when he said that, but I didn't want to correct him. Well, thank you for respecting improv. Exactly. Yes, yes and. ending. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you're an idiot because they're parallel. <laughs> I only know because that was across from my parking complex for a good long while, and I, I used to pine as I looked across the street like, oh, also, a trap. This will be like seven times in this episode that we mentioned it, but you really should just go listen listen to that uh, after dark. You don't even have to watch. You can just put it on like you would an episode oh, of yeah. YouTube on as a player. Oh, it's uh, a blast. It was a lot of fucking fun. I, I'm still thinking about it. Indeed, and major kudos to Jess for a phenomenal job DMing. It was uh, wonderfully fruitful for all involved parties. I think we all had a blast, so thank you for that. It was the perfect layup for the amount of jackassery that we, you know, have. <laughs> Indeed. And my clit. But, and uh, my axe. <laughs> and my flame jizzelt. Oh, Gizalt. you can't Gizm, say it. Whatever. Your flame jism. Oh, yeah, queen fucker. <laughs> <laughs> One does not simply wield the English language. <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and germaphobes thank you for being here as always and uh, keep coming back it works if you work it and we're worth it we've proven that thank you all for being here so for the disinformed podcast this week i'm shane i'm john i'm michael i'm courtney and zippity zoop we're out of here what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> i want to do something different I didn't like it. Hey. <laughs> Let's all butcher our outro. Let's all butcher our outro. Let's all butcher our outro.